In this problem, we're told a 1400 kilogram sports car accelerates from rest to 95 kilometers per hour in 7.4 seconds. What is the average power delivered by the engine? So in order to solve this problem, you need to know this formula. You need to know that power is going to be equal to work over time. And so keep in mind what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to solve for power. So we just got to take the work and then divide it by the time. And so we do know the time in this case. It's going to be uh, 7.4 seconds. Right, so 7.4 seconds, and we just got to take the work and divide it by that. But what is the work going to be? So in this problem, we can't really solve for work, right? Because work equals force times distance, and we don't really know a force. They don't give us that. But what you can do is say, you need to know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, right? And if that's the case, what we can do is just solve for the change in kinetic energy. So the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, right? And so notice that they give us velocity, so this is what they want you to do. And so... How do we find the change in kinetic energy though? So essentially the change in kinetic energy is just going to be 1 half mv2 squared, right? Minus 1 half mv1 squared. You're just taking the kinetic energy at the end, right? Wherever your velocity is. In this case, they're saying at 95 kilometers per hour. And then this one is going to be in the beginning. So essentially just take it at the end, minus it at the beginning. So we can rewrite this though as just m. 1 half m, and then I'm just factoring that up out of both. So it's just v2 squared minus v1 squared. So essentially, this is going to be the change in kinetic energy, and we can just put this up here and then divide it by 7.4, and that's going to be our answer. So let's go ahead and solve this. First, let's find the velocities. So v sub 1 and v sub 2, which is your velocity in the beginning, velocity at the end. So they tell us we start from rest. So if we start from rest, that means our velocity is 0 meters per second. And then... Uh, keep in mind also for this one, v sub 2, they give us that it's 95 kilometers per hour. But when we solve this, it has to be in meters per second. So we have to convert this into meters per second. So let's go ahead and do that. So 95 kilometers per hour. We know that there's 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. That'll cancel the kilometers, right? Multiply by 1,000. And then that for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Right, that'll get rid of the hour, and then we just have meters over seconds. So essentially, just do 95 times a thousand, right, which is just 95,000, and then divide that by 3,600. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 26.388, and so on. I'm just going to round it to 26.389, and so meters per second. So this is going to be your velocity now. And so all we can do is just plug it in now, and then we'll be able to solve, right? So the change in kinetic energy is one half times your mass. And so they did tell us in the beginning, the mass of our sports car is 1400 kilograms. So 1400, and then V2 is uh, 26.389 squared minus V sub one, which is just zero, zero squared is just zero. So it's essentially just one half times 1400 times 26.389 squared. So if you go ahead and do that, you're gonna get that it equals, so 700 times 26.389 squared. You're gonna get that the change in kinetic energy is equal to 487465. So 487,465.5247. You can go as far as you want, whatever you wanna do. Uh, essentially, so this is going to be your change in kinetic energy, and we measure it in joules. So, right, because energy is measured in joules. So, I can't really fit the J, but just know it's in joules. So, if we want to solve for the power now, right, change in kinetic energy is equal to the work. So, we just take the work divided by time. So, just take this number for 487,465 and then divide it by 7.4. So, P is equal to 487. 465.5247 divide that by 7.4 and so if you go ahead and do this you're going to get that it equals so if you go ahead, if you do this 65 it's equal to 65873.71 so 65873 point seven one. And so keep in mind, this is going to be in watts. So when you take joules and divide it by time, you get watts. 
So this is 65,873.71 watts, but uh, you can also find it in horsepower. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna erase everything on screen. So if you wanna write it down, write it down. Uh, but I'm just gonna need this number in order to convert it to horsepower. So it's 65,873.7. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna round this. So essentially, I'm just gonna make it 66,000. I'm just rounding up, just because it's gonna make it easier when converting. If your teacher wants you to do the exact version, just make sure you use this number when converting. So 66,000, and then I'm gonna convert it or 66,000 watts. And so if you want to take watts and convert it into horsepower, we know that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. If that's the case, right, this is in watts. So 66,000 watts, multiply that by one horsepower, and then over 746 watts. So, right, because if we have something in watts and we just divide it by 746, that's going to give it in horsepower. So 66,000 divided by 746. If you go ahead and do that, you're gonna get 88.4718 and so on. I'm just gonna round up the whole number. So it's gonna be about 88 horsepower. Keep in mind, we did use an estimated version when calculating the horsepower. So it's not as exact, but if you want it exact, just use this number right here, which was uh, to the decimal point, right, in watts. But yeah, so 88 horsepower is our estimated answer.